Greetings and welcome to Prayer for America and the Nations. I'm Walter Zagrevich and I am being joined by Reverend Albert Ramirez. Thank you for joining us today on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Telegram, Rumble, and our webpage. Wherever you are watching us, thank you for joining us. And please let your friends know that the program is on live and do sign up for to our YouTube channel. We have more than one. One is under my name. That's the one that goes live. And then it is posted later on the Global Vision channel. Uh, well, allow notifications. That way, when we are on here, you will be notified with just a quick little message that the program's on. And if you're available, you can jump on and join us. Well, uh, we are continuing to pray for America, for Ukraine, for the nations, and for the needs of those who are writing in. So that includes your needs. So if you have a need that you want us to pray for, please write us and let us know so that we can bring that need before the Lord and agree with you in prayer. Well, God is answering prayer and sometimes we don't see it and we get worried because we see the darkness that comes before the light. We see the <laughs> biggest uh, uh, problems just before the dawning. And so we have to keep our eyes on the Lord. We have to stay focused on him and continue to persevere until we see the manifestation of that answer to prayer. Brother Albert, welcome. Amen. Thank you for having me on here, Walter. <clears throat> it's always a pleasure to join the saints in praying, believing and agreeing together uh, according to the word of God. When we pray according to the word of God, God answers. God answer, watches over his word to perform it. And it's not just a, a it's not just a formula that we pray. It's a, it's not just a rote that we pray, continue the same thing over and over. We communicate with God the Father through his word, and we also share through his word. We pray with his word and in an agreement with his word. And when we do that, the Holy Spirit himself makes intercession with us because he's in us, the Holy Spirit. He makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So that's important to remember that. It says that in John chapter 16, uh, Romans 8, I'm said. Sorry, but it uh, he makes intercession with us. And that, not only that, we also say, it talks about in Hebrews, where Jesus is also making intercession and praying for us. So we, we're not alone in this praying um, uh, this praying ministry that we have. So I just wanted to remind everybody about the Lord also interceding and the Holy Spirit himself also interceding with us. Absolutely. Amen. Uh, God uh, um, does answer prayer. And sometimes because we don't see it immediately, we get discouraged. And that is what the devil wants us to do. Just throw up our hands and say, hey, it didn't work, or we didn't see the answer. But like you said, it's number one, it's not a formula. We need to have a relationship with God. And the Bible encourages us to pray without ceasing. It doesn't mean that you're going to be on your knees 24-7 uh, because that's impossible. You've got things to do uh, and activities to be involved in. But what that means is that we could be in communion with God on a regular basis. We could commune with him. We could be walking down the street and we could be communing with God. We could be talking to him and he wants to talk to us. So open your heart, open your life, involve God in your life, involve God in your family, your home, your finances, in all that is a part of your life. He wants to be involved, but again, he doesn't force himself in. He, The Bible says he stands at the door and knocks. He wants to come into our lives. He wants to reside in our lives. He wants to have fellowship with us. So it's a relationship with God. Brother Albert, uh, people and, and, uh, are getting more and more concerned with uh, uh, President Putin threatening uh, to use nuclear weapons. Um, it's got um, people worried in, uh, in various parts of the world. And of course, people have seen different types of things happening. The huge hurricanes that have hit the East Coast, uh, particularly Florida and uh, 
uh, of course, not just Florida, but especially Florida, and has hit other places, uh, the states uh, just north of Florida, um, and also uh, places like Cuba, where some of the, the churches have lost roofs and things like that. And so we see these scenarios. We're seeing the war in Ukraine. We're seeing um, events uh, that uh, partly maybe we are more informed because of instantaneous news uh, media uh, today being able to, not just news media, but people being able to communicate um, in real time from anywhere in the world. And so, uh, so uh, maybe that communication is good to an extent because it keeps us, uh, uh, we can get immediate information. On the other hand, what I'm seeing is some people are just getting really worried and think this is the end. This is it. And we do know that certain things are to happen before the return of Jesus Christ. And we do know that there will be wars and rumors of wars. There will be catastrophes and so on. But I believe that God still has a, a revival in store, a great and mighty move where not just uh, tens or hundreds or even thousands, I believe millions are going to not only hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, but be saved. And one of the things that uh, um, that the news, of course, will not inform you about is, for example, in Ukraine, parallel to the war and the atrocities, there is a move of God where people are being saved. I got a message from Bishop Vasily and Zaporizhia just moments before the broadcast. And he said, you know, we we were we spent the day visiting, and he named a number of villages that they went to, and they preached the gospel and gave out aid. And he said people were receiving the Lord in every one of those villages. People were just flocking to them as they approach um, those villages. And so what does that tell me? It tells me that people uh, are responding to the gospel. There is revival. He said on the broadcast uh, day before yesterday that his church has tripled in size. So there is this great move of God parallel to all of these other things. But what I wanted to say is that we can get caught up in seeing this doomsday scenario, and a lot of people starting to talk more about that, and lose out, uh, lose focus on the Lord, and and kind of lose hope. We should never lose hope. Being believers, we know our hope is in Christ, and of course, we know something should happen here on earth. We know where we will be with the Lord. But I, I'm not. Uh, uh, but I, I think sometimes we get ahead and we get um, we blow up the. Um, the, the the bigness of that potential problem, and we lose sight of the mission. We lose sight of what we are supposed to be doing here on earth, and uh, we have to be careful because the devil is a deceiver, and uh, there's a lot, a lot of deception. And I'm not saying that the threats are, uh, are are not true. I'm just saying that there is so much stuff uh, out there and so much stuff being thrown at us that we have to be careful. And I think we need to tune out some of this stuff so that we can refocus on God and his word. Wouldn't you agree with that, Brother Albert? Amen. I mean, you know, the word of God tells us in John, uh, chapter, the gospel of John chapter one, verse 12, to as many as received him, Jesus, it says to as many as received him, they are sons of God. And as sons of God, we should act accordingly. We should be imitators of God, Ephesians 5, 1 says. So, I mean, if we're sons of God, and then you have the examples that Jesus gives us in the gospels. He, for example, when, when he was on the back of the boat in, in Mark chapter four, at the end of the chapter there, you know, a storm came and tried to overtake them, tried to kill them, tried to prevent them. And it probably possibly could have, you know, prevent them from doing the will of God and fulfilling God's plan, God's purpose and God's will. Well, of course, the authority that Jesus had baptized with the Holy Spirit, uh, 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 a man baptized with the Holy Spirit, the son of God. Yes, because he was sent and he was born of a virgin, but also a man baptized with the Holy Spirit, just like you and I are and acting as a son of God. What he did is got, got up from that back of that boat. He took authority over the storm. He rebuked the wind. He rebuked the, the, the waves of the sea. And then he tried it, his disciples saying, well, how is it that you don't have faith? So we're supposed to have faith 
to be able to stop these things, to, to pray against these things because we're sons of God. You know, and, and, and look, we have another scripture here in Romans chapter 8. It says, verse 14 says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God. And that's important to have a relationship like you had mentioned earlier, for all of us to have that relationship with the Holy Spirit, with the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit is the one that we, we need to have a relationship. He's our helper. He's our comforter. He's the power that you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. We're to, we're to have power. We're to be comforted in, in, in our knowledge of knowing because he's the one that teaches us and reveals and takes the things of Christ. Like he says in John chapter 16 and reveals them unto us. He took now the things of Christ he does reveals to us is the plans of God, the purpose of God. And I also believe in the timing of God. I believe that we'll know the season. We may not know the exact date and time, but we will know the season and the time. And there's a time for every purpose under the sun, Jesus, the word of God says in Ecclesiastes. So it's important for us to realize that we're sons of God and we're not to sit here, uh, you know, with our hands folded or twiddling our thumbs, you know, uh, in, in fear. You know, God has not called us in bondage again to fear. Let me finish reading these verses here in Romans 8. It says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. In verse 15, for you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. So we're not supposed to be waiting for God to return, the Lord to return in fear or anything. We're supposed to act like sons of God. And that means Act, you know, walking in our authority and our dominion in Christ Jesus as sons of God in Christ, baptized with the power of God through the Holy Spirit. Okay, it says um, uh, to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption. The Holy Spirit, God has adopted us through the Holy Spirit, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, in verse 16, the spirit itself or himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the sons of God or children of God. And if children, then there were heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Well, we, we're, we're joint heirs with Christ and that's joint heirs of that authority, that dominion that Christ brought back to humanity that God intended them to have from the very beginning <coughs> with Adam and Eve. So we're not, and, and there's a scripture and, 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 a Matthew, I can't remember which word, but it's in Matthew. Uh, <coughs> Jesus gives a parable. He says, occupy till I come. It's an example of him leaving and then returning back, you know, and, and that we're supposed to occupy till we come. When we occupy, that means we control things. We take care of things. Uh, of course, the dominion scripture we have in, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 20, <coughs> 26, we're supposed to have dominion over the earth and the things that move upon the earth you know and we have uh, um uh psalm 8 you know we are he gives us authority and dominion over the works of his hands so we're not supposed to let the devil control things yes the devil is operating but we are supposed to rise up we're supposed to occupy till he does come and we're supposed to rise up as sons of god with the authority and the power that we have in the Holy Spirit, led by the Spirit, of course, very important to be led by the Spirit and also to speak against these things, to do what Jesus did when the storm tried to kill him, to, 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 to speak peace to the waves, to the wind, to command the winds to stop. I mean, and, and then, of course, when we, we're not dealing with flesh and blood when it comes to nations and people making threats. There's a, you know, people make it seem like God is not in control. He is in control. And he also gives some of that control to his sons, which we are. And we're supposed to exercise that authority, that dominion, and that sonship by occupying and, 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 and establishing his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven, even now, not, not in the king, the, the thousand year reign kingdom time, but now, even now, we're supposed to reign in this life you know, uh, uh, Romans uh, 5, 17, through Christ Jesus, we're supposed to reign, R-E-I-G-N. We're supposed to control, take authority over, bind and loose, declare what's legal in heaven, declare what's illegal in heaven, Matthew 16, 19, you know, the Amplified Version. So, I mean, we're not here helpless, but we're here with full authority, full power, full dominion in Christ Jesus, in him, in him, and in with our relationship with the Holy Spirit. Amen. And uh, well said, because, you know, Jesus preached the gospel, but then he ascended to heaven 
And what he did he do? He gave what we call the Great Commission, where basically he told the disciples to continue the work that he had begun. So he began and he did his part preaching in Israel, preaching in Jerusalem and all over Israel. And then he went back to the Father and he commanded the disciples. He commanded the church. The church gathered, the church that was in existence at that moment in time gathered to see him off <laughs> going back to heaven. And what did he do? He gave the command to go and preach the gospel to every creature. Now, he gave that command not just to the apostles, not just to his disciples, he gave it to the church. And so um, one of the things that we get caught up with this and we get caught up with that and and you know, and right now, as we're talking here, people are, you know, talking about the doomsday, uh, doomsday scenarios and things of that nature. And, you know, we can get caught up. I mean, there's Bible prophecy about end time. It is all, uh, it is uh, very important that we be, we be aware of that. But we have to keep things in check. We have to keep things in balance. The Bible very clearly said, and Jesus in Matthew 24 says, Said, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached as a witness to all nations. Some people will translate that as people groups or every ethnicity, every, every group of people in the world. And then the end will come. And so, yes, there are scenarios that are taking place. There are events taking place in Israel. And Israel, of course, is a major part of the prophetic clock. There's a lot of talk right now about the red heifers that were uh, brought to Israel now, something that would have been a prerequisite to be able to reinitiate the um, Old uh, uh, Testament sacrifices. Um, the precursor again, some people say, to the rebuilding of the temple. Well, we can get caught up in all those things. Those things are important, but let us not lose focus of our mission. Our mission is to share Jesus, to share about the love of Jesus with this dying world. And uh, yes, things are happening and things will happen, but let us not get our eyes off of our mission, off the ball, as we say here in America. And so again, I, I, back in the day, I played soccer or called football in other countries. It is important to keep your eyes on that ball. Uh, somebody could have some real fancy footwork and try to trick you, and you could be watching their feet or you could be watching that ball. And if you watch their feet, you're just going to lose because they'll trick you. And that's the way it is in life. You know, there's so many things that are out there to uh, get us distracted, to get us off course. And the devil is a specialist at this, and he's trying that any way possible. Unfortunately, sometimes he even uh, distracts believers and gets them off into arguing with each other, into uh, getting mad at each other, into getting busy with unimportant things or get busy with quote-unquote religious things, but miss out on the mission. And the mission is to preach the gospel to every creature. And so, as Brother Albert said, Jesus said that we are to occupy until he comes. So he began the work, we're to continue it, and then he returns back again. But he did not leave us as orphans. He left us in Howard with the Holy Spirit. Remember, he said, it's better that I go to my father. And what happened? When he went to the father, he sent the Holy Spirit. And now the Holy Spirit, Jesus was in one place at one time. The Holy Spirit can be everywhere. And so the Holy Spirit can work simultaneously in Africa and India in China and the U.S., in Russia and in Ukraine. The Holy Spirit can work in Argentina or Brazil, in Cuba or in Canada. The Holy Spirit is working, but we need 
to stay focused on the mission, stay pliable in God's hands, and stay in tune to the Spirit of God as He leads us and helps us to navigate through life and through circumstances. Brother Albert. I mean, I mean, you know, and, and we have we have the word of God that tells us it says here, like for example, in 2 Timothy chapter 3. It says, uh, this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Perilous times will come. Perilous, perilous times have been since the time of Christ and even before that. But I mean, it says here, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, and holy, without natural affection, truce breakers, truce breakers uh, false accusers, incontinent, or what that means without self-control, fierce, despite of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. I mean, if he tells us that they have, there are those that have a form of godliness, and it says from those turn away, it's because they're not exercising their rights in Christ Jesus. They're not exercising their authority in Christ Jesus. And and because, because we're not walking as sons of God, like I had mentioned earlier, in that authority and that dominion that Christ brought back to us, because we're not doing that, then, of course, these things are going to take place. And, of course, the Bible, Jesus talked about the last days, these things happening, earthquakes and diverse places, famines. But we still are supposed to walk in our authority and our dominion in, in thwarting these things as they try to approach us or uh, uh, come close to us as God's sons and daughters, you know, so we're supposed to speak against it, pray against it, stand against it, stand against all the wiles of the devil. Who do you think is bringing all this stuff? It's not God bringing all this stuff. It's, he's, it's the devil bringing it, but it's still the church. We're the authorities, the dominion on this earth now. We're, Christ brought it back. We're supposed to be exercising that authority and that dominion until he returns, period. You know, I don't know why people don't get that. It's just like, uh, you know, they think that we're just supposed to be there in fear, you know, wringing our hands because we see things coming to pass. Get your eyes off the things coming to pass. Start speaking against them. Take authority over them. Stand against them. They're the wiles of the devil. It's the devil causing these things. So what are you going to do? Let them run rampant over you, you know, rough shot over you and no. stomp over you? We're not supposed to do that. We're supposed to exercise our authority, dominion until he comes, occupy until he comes. Reign in this life, you know, Romans 5, 17, reign and rule and reign in this life over all things until he comes. You know, it's just, uh, it just kind of, it gets me a little uh, excited about that, you know, about people just sitting there wringing their hands in fear, waiting for all the terrible things to the, for the devil to bring all these terrible things to pass and them doing nothing about it. Amen. And, and that's a very, very good and important point that you just made that is often overlooked, uh, even by preachers, unfortunately. Amen. And that is if we do know that if something is about to come or we get find out that there is, for example, a storm coming in a certain direction. And of course, you know, it could be a physical <laughs> storm or another kind of storm. We <laughs> Have authority in Christ to pray and come against those things. Don't just take it as, okay, kiss it, ah, sit, ah, you know, whatever will be, will be, and, and just wring our hands and, 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 and be in fear someplace, but confront that situation in prayer. You know, um, you know, we talked about that nuclear threat. Well, the thing is that, you know, behind those thoughts, behind those ideas, there is a spirit. Well, obviously, it's not the spirit of God. So what do we do? We, as believers, we combine that demonic spirit that is putting that idea, that is putting that influence on the mind of that person that is making those threats. The Bible very clearly says that our war is not against flesh and blood. It's not against human beings. Man. It is against those principalities, those rulers of the darkness of this age. So there are spiritual forces, just like there are physical forces at work. And those spiritual forces, uh, they try to dominate, regions. They try to dominate 
people's lives. They try to influence leaders. And so, uh, and leaders are human beings. They will be influenced either by good or evil, their own ideas or God ideas or demonic ideas in some cases. And so what do we do? Um, we have authority in Jesus Christ to bind that demonic spirit that is bringing that influence to that leader or those leaders to want to do that. And if we hear of a potential cat a catastrophic event, we pray against that, um, that, you know, if there's a hurricane coming, that it goes back out into the sea or that it dissipates. Uh, we can pray that way. So we don't just go and hide. We pray. Uh, and, and thank you for pointing that out, Brother Albert, because sometimes also people will hear a word about something that's going to happen. And that word is a warning, but it's also a call to action, a call to prayer. And yet, unfortunately, many do not see it that way. They just say, okay, this is going to happen. You better just get ready. Wait a minute. You know, we see that even in, in a situation like uh, uh, in the Bible, where the one king um, had uh, a God through his prophet had told him, he's, get his house in order, he's going to die. I mean, it was like going to be imminent. And he cried out to God, and God changed that. And that was God. Well, you know, we're now in the New Testament where Jesus Christ defeated the devil, and he gave us certain authority over demons, over demonic forces, over the ruler of the air, who the Bible says is Satan. And so we need to exercise that, don't we, Brother Albert? That's right. Yeah, you know, and, and let, me, let me find the scripture here real quick. Uh, also in, in John chapter 16, this is, what, this is what the word of God says. It says that in, in, uh, in John chapter 16, which is a chapter that talks about how Jesus is going to send the comfort of the Holy Spirit. He will empower, teach us, show us things to come. But he says this. He says, uh, and when he has come, the Holy Spirit, he will reprove, you know, or judge the world uh, in, of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. It says of sin because they don't believe on me, because people don't believe in Jesus as their Lord and Savior. That's the major, that's the number one thing he'll convict you of, of sin. And then the verse 10 says of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more. That means righteousness because the Holy Spirit will be here as our helper, our teacher, our guide, and empower the one that will empower us in all things and then also he says here and this is the uh this is a good one right here uh uh john 16 11 he says of judgment because the prince of this world is judged not going to be judged he's already judged and he's judged by god he's judged by christ and if he's been judged then what kind of authority what kind of power do you think he can exercise the only power he can exercise is the power we allow him to have because we are the sons of God here on earth now and supposed to be teaching and preaching and, and establishing the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. Scriptures tell us that Jesus told us to pray that in the Our Father prayer. So if we're not doing that, of course he's going to run rampant rampant and, and just overtake cities, countries. And, and I am totally convinced that he also... Uh, manif can manifest, the devil can manifest through storms. For example, that storm that, that, that came against Jesus and disciples in the back of the boat in Mark chapter 4 at the end of the chapter there. You know, that storm, that was not God that sent that storm, tried to destroy Jesus and the disciples. That was the devil using, using uh, natural things, the things the, the Bible calls him the God of this world, little g, uh, in, in 2 Corinthians 4, 4. But it, it, but, you know, we are the authority. We have authority over all the power of the enemy, Luke 10, 19. And if we don't do nothing about it, if we don't speak, you know, like I said, I think he, I, I'm, I'm almost, I'm positive he can use uh, um, natural things like, like cause earthquakes, could, can manipulate the earth somehow. The devil can do that, can cause storms and, and things like that. And, and, you know, like he did try to kill Jesus and the disciples on that back of that boat. But, we are to exercise authority. And the Bible tells us in, in scripture, it tells us if, if one will put a thousand, it's important for us to be united with one mind and one spirit 
concerning these things, concerning standing against them, concerning praying against these things. Because the scriptures tells us that one will put a thousand of the enemies, think demonic spirits that you can't see with your with your uh, with your natural eyes. So, uh, but one will put a thousand uh, to flight a thousand to ten thousand. So, how much more should we be united against these things, not fighting against these things? And it's important for us to realize. And I speak to the prophetic calling out there, these prophets uh, preaching and teaching doom and gloom and you know basically almost telling you go hide in the shelter and what for <laughs> you better get out there and start exercising your authority and dominion hiding in the shelter not going to do you any good so stop listening to these these prophets of doom and start listening to the word of god start listening to the holy spirit whom we have fellowship and relationship with and that's who you're supposed to listen to to, to as many as are led by the spirit of god we just read in Romans 8, 14, to many as are led on communicating or talking with the Holy Spirit, they are the sons of God, and they are the ones who are supposed to be manifesting his will, his plan, and his purpose, and that's that's to destroy the works of the devil. That uh, 1 John uh, uh, 3, 8, that was the purpose of Jesus coming here in the beginning. That's still his purpose for you and I because we are sons of God, and, and, and is to destroy the works of the devil. So we better start doing our job and doing the thing he's called us to do is to destroy the works of the devil while we are here. Amen. And Albert, let's stop right here and let's pray and then we'll go on. But there are people facing situations. Now, uh, you and I and my wife, Nina, we are leaving for Poland, Ukraine and Romania in just a matter of uh, days uh, very soon. And uh, uh, what I know from um, my uh, from previous many many previous missions journeys uh, missions trips, um, as I prepare for that, uh, the devil just throws whatever he can throw, uh, trying to break some piece of equipment at home, something go wrong, just something to distract me from what I need to get done, what I need to finish up or get ready for that journey. And um, I hate to admit it, this is no different. <laughs> so uh, in fact, it seems that sometimes it's even worse than others because, uh, well, it's just a confirmation. As Sister Marcy says, thank you, devil. You just confirmed the fact that I'm doing God's will. <laughs> you just confirmed <laughs> the fact that I'm on the right track. Well, that's a positive way of looking at it. But on the other hand, you know, you have to deal with some unforeseen uh, situation that's just uh, a hassle and a problem that uh, the timing of which interferes with what you need to do for God. And isn't that like the devil? You just mentioned that storm coming against Jesus and the disciples out in, in the sea. Um, it, it, it's, uh, it could be a physical thing. It could be uh, something else, some situation, some problem, just some bill, whatever. Uh, the devil is not going to have the victory. And uh, and some people think, hey, you guys are preachers, you've got it all together, There's you, you never have problems, you never face situations, and everything is just great. Well, it is great in Jesus, mm -hmm. hallelujah, but we face things just like you do, and uh, yeah. but, you know, we go to God in prayer, and, and we ask you to pray for us, too. We're praying for you, but <laughs> we need prayers, and we are going to be in some areas. Of, we're going to be in areas where the enemy does not want us to be. We'll be meeting with some top leaders. We're going to be discussing uh, various things that are crucial to the move of God. And so the devil does not want that to happen. The devil tries to throw obstacles, and we know that. And so I recognize that. But you know, he's not going to get the victory. God will be be glorified, and we're going to see great and mighty things, great and great move of God. Uh, but Brother Albert, let's pray, and, and I want us to also pray for this upcoming journey that we'll be on just very shortly. And folks, the broadcast is going to continue on, um, so uh, we're going to try to do some live broadcast. If we have internet from where we will be at, 
Um, we'll try to do some of that. But um, uh, Brother Tom McLaughlin has agreed. He's going to be uh, hosting the broadcast, and we're going to continue on with these broadcasts. So please uh, do not stop tuning in. We'll continue them at the same time, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. East Coast time. In addition to that, we'll try to add some live feeds when we can, if we can barge in on the broadcast from where we're at for a few minutes, just to give you an update, we'll do that. And uh, But we will try to add some additional material as we are, uh, as we go through the process and go through the, uh, through the journey. Uh, so, but we're excited, you know, yes, the devil um, uh, is opposing this and uh, throwing tantrums, but he's not going to have the victory. Victory. We are going to see great and mighty things. Uh, amen. Brother Albert, pray. Pray for this upcoming trip. Uh, pray also for those who are right now, let's just put it plainly, scared. You know, they hear all this doomsday uh, scenarios, and, uh, and, and let's not beat around the bush. They're just scared. People are scared right now. Can you pray for them? Um, I know that they need to get in God's word. They just need to re be re-encouraged by God's word. But let's pray for them right now. Would you lead out in prayer, Brother Albert? Amen. Father, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. Lord God, Lord. we yield ourselves to him, the, the Holy Spirit. He's our helper. He's our power. He's our authority. He's our teacher, instructor. He shows us. He takes your plan, your work word your will to reveal unto us what we're supposed to do while we're here so father we thank you for that first and foremost and we give you all the glory and all the praise and lord as sons of god we just exercise authority and dominion over the principalities the powers the rulers of darkness spiritual wickedness in high places that would try to thwart this trip we're going to go on father that will try to put fear in the minds of people your people that are watching here on this broadcast, people around the world, and the, especially the body of Christ. God is, we just finished reading in, in Romans chapter eight, that God has not given us a spirit of fear to be in bondage to that fear. He's given us authority and power over all the power of the enemy. Luke 10, 19, and nothing shall by any means hurt us. That's your promise, that's your word, and I that we decree it, release the authority and power in that word and that decree. So Lord, we just thank you for, Father, that in the name of Jesus, we take authority over the spirit of fear, trying to take hold of the minds of your people, Lord, that are trying to, that's trying to manipulate your people through fear into inactivity. Lord, I'm not kidding. As, an inactivity as believers, mm -hmm. Father, that they just sit there and wring their hands in fear. No, you get up in the name of Jesus. You stand in agreement, one mind, one spirit with the Holy Spirit leading us, guiding us, instructing us in how to pray, what to pray. For we know not how to pray as we ought, but he knows how to pray the will and the purpose of God according to God's perfect plan and will. In Jesus' name, Father, we thank you for the Holy Spirit's help. We release our authority, the dominion over the power, principalities, the powers that are trying to cause obstacles in every believer's life right now in, in governments in Jesus. And we bind you and cast you off our governments, and you do the same as a believer where you're at, in the country you're at, in the name of Jesus, we take authority over the principalities, the powers trying to manipulate, trying to corrupt, trying to bring lawlessness in your country, in the name of Jesus, we stand against it, we're supposed to stand against all the wiles of the devil, not just standing, but being overcomers, we're not, we're supposed to be, the devil's supposed to be on the defensive. We are on the offensive with the authority and the power of Christ Jesus in the Holy, by the Holy power of the Holy Spirit. But Lord, we thank you in Jesus name. We take authority over lawlessness in our governments. We take authority over corruption and, and we, that spirit of antichrist in our governments. We bind you in the name of Jesus, cast you out to outer darkness in the name that we loosen. We release the angels of the Lord, the, the authority of God. We release the edict of God's kingdom, which is God's peace, God's joy, God's salvation, God's deliverance, God's revival power. <laughs> we release it in the countries of those that are watching, and we stand in agreement with our brethren that are watching and believing and decreeing the same thing, speaking the same thing. Your word says 
Paul, by the Holy Spirit, said, speak the same thing. Well, we are speaking the same thing. Hopefully, the believers are in agreement with us speaking and releasing your authority, your dominion, your power in Jesus' name, in your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. So, Father, we just thank you for that. We give you praise and glory and honor. That spirit of fear is bound and cast out of the believer, especially, <clears throat> but also others that lack knowledge. <clears throat> and we just loosen boldness, courage, grace, <clears throat> authority, dominion on the believer, and for them to release that and to share that authority, to share that confidence, that boldness in Christ with others that are near them, around them, especially their family members. And we just release that in Jesus' name, and we thank you, Lord, that you are honoring our prayers, that you are, that we are releasing your word in our prayers, and your word you watch over to perform it, and it will not return unto you void. You said that's what you promised, and that is exactly what's going on right now as we pray this, as we speak this, as we release our authority, release your authority in us. Lord, and through these edicts and through these prayers that we're praying in Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen, amen. And Father, we thank you for the fact that you hear our prayers, and we know that if you hear our prayers, you also answer our prayers. So we thank you for the answer. We thank you for victory. And Lord, I bind those demonic spirits that are influencing leaders who want to cause uh, catastrophic uh, uh, events and catastrophic even nuclear attacks. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we bind those demons that have put those thoughts in their minds. Yeah. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we speak, we say, no, we arrest those demonic influences in the name of Jesus yeah. Christ. And we release peace. We release salvation, yeah. healing, <laughs> and deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ over the nations. Yes. And Lord God, we lift up the nation of Ukraine. We lift up those pastors, those uh, leaders who will be joining us shortly uh, for a time of refreshing, a time of prayer, a time mm -hmm. of encouraging one another. Father, yes. I pray that you would protect them as they transverse through dangerous territory to get to that location. And Lord God, I pray that you would protect us as we journey there. Yeah. And Father, we thank you that your angels are already setting the way yeah. and they're going before us and preparing the way for us and for them. Yeah. And Lord God, we thank you for a time of rejoicing. We thank you, God, for a time of victory in you. And Father, I pray for those who are in fear. I cast out that spirit of fear Come yeah. down in the name of Jesus Thanks. Christ. And I release the, the power of God. Amen. Move, oh God. Move the Holy Spirit into the lives of those at the sound of my voice right now. Be set free from that spirit of fear. Be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Be encouraged right now. Rise up in the name of Jesus and say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh God, we lift up the nations of the world as they are searching, not knowing who and what they are searching yeah. for, but we know that they are searching for the desire of all nations, Jesus Christ. And Lord, there are many people seeking to fill that emptiness in their lives right now, looking in the wrong places, looking to the wrong people. Lord, may they come to you right this moment and yes. they say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I know I need you. I need you this hour. Come into my life. Save me. Forgive me. I believe you died on the cross. I believe you resurrected from the dead and I receive your salvation. I receive the forgiveness of my sins and I thank you for setting me free from sin, from this <laughs> For taking me out of the kingdom of darkness, the yeah. kingdom of the Thank devil, you. and bringing me into your kingdom. And Lord, I say, be my Lord, be my Savior. Your kingdom come. Your will be done yes. in my life, in my home, in my family, in my work, in Jesus' name. Be
They, they, amen. amen. If you prayed that prayer or something similar, sincerely, Jesus has heard your prayer. He's coming into your heart. He's forgiving your sins. And you know what? He is healing you right now. Brother Albert, I sense the power of God moving. I sense the Holy Spirit is touching people. I sense that the Holy Spirit... <clears throat> Um, is touching people who are sick right now around the world. God is healing you. Would you put your hand where you were suffering, that place where you had pain, just put your hand right there and say, in the name of Jesus, I am healed right now. In the name of Jesus, I cast out that pain. I command it to leave in Jesus' name. If you had cancer in your body, I bind that cancer. I cast it out in the name of Jesus Christ, and I command the life of that cancer to die, and every cancerous cell to leave your body in Jesus' name, and I pray that the Spirit of God touches you, and Father, I pray that your resurrection power would just flow through those who are at the sound of my voice right now, bringing healing, bringing restora restoration, creating new cells <laughs> healthy cells in that body and uh, pushing out every cancerous cell. Oh, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ uh, and we command every spirit of infirmity to come out in that name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Uh, Brother Albert, we have been praying for America. We've been praying for Ukraine. We've been praying for other nations. We've been praying for those who have been affected by the hurricane in Florida and other states north of Florida, um, people that have been affected by the hurricane prior to this one uh, in Puerto Rico, and it went all the way up to the um, uh, all the way up to the northeast of Canada. So we are praying for those. We're praying for people that have been affected by this hurricane in Cuba, and uh, we've received information, pictures, churches that have had their roofs blown off. Uh, some pastors lost their homes, they're living with neighbors. Let's pray for these uh, people. Let's pray for America, for this country to return back to God. Let's pray for Canada. Let's pray for other nations. Brother Albert, lead us in prayer as the Holy Spirit leads you. Amen. Father, we just thank you, Lord, and we just lift up these countries, Lord, and Jesus, these pastors, ministers. We thank you, Lord, for your promise. In spite of what the enemy brings against us, even Sometimes because of lack of knowledge, Lord, your word says we suffer unnecessarily. You know, Hosea 4, 6 says that. So, Lord, <clears throat> or perish literally. So, I mean, because of the knowledge that you give us by the Holy Spirit, give that knowledge. Release in the name of Jesus the knowledge of your promises that are yes and amen. The promises of your word that says you, you will provide all our needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus now. Now you will do that, Lord. We believe you for that. We ask you for your, your, your provision, Lord, for those that are in need, like in Cuba and Puerto Rico, Lord, and even in this country and in Florida, in different parts of the world, in Ukraine, with the, some of the war devastation in Jesus, they meet the needs of your people, especially your people, Lord. You do not leave your people helpless or comfortless, Lord, or, or, or with lack, Father but you do provide the needs. So we release those needs to be met. We release the, the provision from the, we loosen according to Matthew 16, the provision of the kingdom of God to meet every physical, spiritual, uh, of, of a financial need to those that are watching Lord in Jesus name. We release the provision from the kingdom of God for those needs to be met, whether it comes through man, whether it comes supernaturally, However you bring it, Father, we receive it. We believe for it. We thank you for it in the name of Jesus. And every strategy, every work of the devil against it, and that would try to be an obstacle to it coming, your provision, we bind and cast out of the way in the name of Jesus. Worldwide, in this country, Lord, in Canada, Mexico, uh, Lord, in Europe, in Russia, in, Ch in China, in in, in in Ukraine, Lord, uh, South America and Africa, all these countries, all these islands, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, and those that are watching with us, 
I pray that they agree with us with these prayers. I pray that they make the same confession for their country because death and life is in the power of their tongue. Blessing and cursing is in the power of their tongue. So release the blessing, release the life. In the name of Jesus, we release the blessing, the life from the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you, Lord, for men, those that have the provision, those that have the finances in this world. We command you to loosen that into the provision, to, to loosen that the finance and the provision for those in need in the name of Jesus, by the authority of Jesus Christ, by the authority of the kingdom of God within us, in Jesus' name. And Lord, we thank you that needs will be met one way or another, supernaturally, multiplication, whether it's through men, shall men give into the bosom, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Father, but you did and you promised to provide all our needs. According to your riches and glory, we trust you, we believe you, we thank you for it, and we give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Folks, uh, just put your trust in the Lord. And uh, we I know we know that some of you are going through very difficult times right now. Some of you are needing to rebuild. We know those of you in Ukraine, you're facing some very difficult obstacles. But remember, God has not forsaken you. You folks in Florida, God has not forsaken you. Folks, wherever you may be at, you may be in India, you may be in Pakistan, you may be in uh, Ukraine or Russia, you may be in um, China. It doesn't matter. There is no limitation to God's power by distance, by nation. It is up to us to believe and trust God. And no matter what the circumstances, God is with us and he'll give us the victory if we put our trust in him and continue to exercise our God-given spiritual authority over our circumstances, over the situations that we confront. <clears throat> we keep looking onto Jesus, the author, the fulfiller, uh, the completer, the fulfiller of our faith. Uh, amen. So um, he is the author and finisher of our faith. So look unto him. Don't look how big that problem might look. Don't look how difficult that circumstance might be. Just look unto Jesus and trust him. And do pray for us. Do pray for Brother Albert, uh, Nina, and myself. Uh, we're leaving for Poland, Ukraine, and Romania. Uh, and uh, we do covet your prayers. We need your prayers. We'll be uh, doing a lot of traveling. We'll be ministering. We'll be meeting with pastors and leaders. We need God's protection. We need God's direction. And um, if God leads you, would you consider supporting us on this journey? Brother Albert, myself, Nina, we need your help. And um, there, uh, you can do that through prayer and you could do that financially. We don't want to go empty handed. <laughs> to be able to bless these pastors. And um, that's beside the fact that there are the ongoing needs of humanitarian relief all over Ukraine. And um, so the needs are great and you could do something right now. Do designate your offering accordingly. And if it is for humanitarian relief, just put down uh, Ukraine humanitarian relief and we will be certain that that's <laughs> it. Goes and the needs, as I just mentioned, are huge. There are thousands of people that need to be fed. Uh, there's now a need of blankets and warm clothing because winter is coming quickly. A lot, a lot of uh, people that will not have heat um, this winter, and so it's going to be very, uh, very difficult. But with God. All things are possible. And you know, if part of, part of the body suffers, the whole body suffers, this is part of the body of Jesus Christ is there. Amen. Let's continue to also pray for the church in Russia right now. There, um, I think many of them are in a very tough situation where, of course, they're not supportive of the war, but uh, they are being forced and, and men are being conscripted into um, the Russian army. And uh, that's what they'll probably <laughs> do already in the occupied areas that they've just declared to be theirs um, illegally, I might add. But um, those um, they'll try to force the Ukrainian men to be conscripted to fight against their 
own people. Um, and, uh, and of course, there's uh, different threats that are being made, but that is why we pray and God is answering prayer. And we see a <clears throat> tremendous move of God. There's a tremendous unity. It's cross-denominational. People are not asking, what denomination are you from? What is your need? How can I help you? And people are helping one another. And many of the people receiving help, they're not church people. They're just people in need. And so the help is not being limited to churches. It's being distributed through churches to the communities they live in, and not just the communities they live in. They're taking the food to places where there are needs, and especially now, those villages that and towns that were just liberated, there's a tremendous need to get help there immediately, and that is happening with your help and ours. So continue to pray. Do what you can. You can do that. Uh, you can give by going to our webpage right now, globalvisionministries.org, or you can send a check to Global Vision Ministries, P.O. Box 5377, El Dorado Hills, California, 95762. And if you want to contribute to Brother Albert, he had, his ministry is uh, called Faith International Prophetic uh, Ministries. And um, uh, P.O. Box, PO Box 1706, uh, Campbell, California, 95009. Uh, say that again uh, slowly. It's it's Faith International Prophetic Ministry, uh, P.O. Box 1706, Campbell, California, 95009. 95009. Okay. Uh, thank you, Brother Albert. And folks, uh, if God prompts you to do something, do not delay. Do it. Do it right now. Um, and I can, we cannot repay you, but God will repay you. And some of these people that we're supporting, we're supporting through pastors we know, pastors we worked with over the years. Um, but the people, the recipients of the aid through these pastors and churches, we don't know. They're just people in need. But someday I believe that many of them will come up to you at the feet of Jesus and will say, thank you for helping me when I was down. Thank you for sending food. Thank you for sending the gospel to me. So thank you again. And thank you, Brother Albert. God richly bless you. And folks, please don't look at the bigness of your need. Look at the bigness of God. And remember that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen.